Hello everybody, my name is Chidi Ketunye. Welcome to this edition of Jewish Care. We want to talk about some basic human rights today. Remember that song by the popular and revered artist Fela that says, Anima wants to teach me human rights. What Fela was trying to put across then was that human right is something that is inherent in every person. It is not something that is considered to you by government or by any organization. It is your right as a human being. And of course, these rights have been enshrined in the Constitution, which is a document that embodies the contract between the state and the citizens. And for the fact that these rights have been enshrined in the Constitution, it gives them force and status above every other law. Of course, we know that the Constitution is the strongest norm in the land, what we refer to as the grand norm. Today, we want to look at some of these rights. I'm not going to go into the detail of every one of these rights as written in the Constitution, but I'm just going to give a few examples so that we can understand how these rights operate and then subsequently how we can insist on these rights because what are rights if they are not insisted upon if they are not enforced one of the first basic human rights i want to talk about is the right to life now this right presupposes that nobody has any right can nobody can legally take away the life of another person another human being and that every human being has a right to life there is an exception however to this rule and that is when there has been a judgment or a sentence by a court of law to the effect that a person should be killed when there is what we call the death sentence another area where this right can be limited and which is the case with the general scheme of rights first of all let me say this that your rights are not absolute especially in relation to another person your right ends where another person's right begins so for instance when we're talking about right to life your right to life may be taken away from you if you violate another person's right to life so if you attack another person that person is entitled to defend himself even to the extent of taking away your own right to life in in the same way if you violate another person's property or you trespass into another person's property in defense of his property the person is permitted to use necessary force to defend his property which might result in your losing your life so we see that rights are absolute yet they are not absolute to say per se we see that your right ends where another person's right begins and that is the whole scheme across all these rights as guaranteed in the constitution for for instance let's look at also the right to hold any thought right to freedom of thought conscience and religion now nobody can be forced to hold on to any religion or any persuasion that is why even in the constitution it is prohibited it, it, it is it is prohibited or when i say prohibited i mean it is not allowed for you to enforce any kind of um, religious instruction upon a child without the consent of the of the guardian so what that means is that for instance if my child if I'm a Christian and I send my child to a school, the school will be violating the child's right to freedom of religion and conscience if they try to force any other religion or any other religious instruction on him without my consent. Now, another interesting aspect of this is that it also allows religious organizations or different schools of thought to set up their own schools and teach their own beliefs and principles in those schools 
a, a very interesting issue came up some time ago in state where there was this opera that in a Baptist school students wanted to come to a Baptist, a Baptist school wearing um, their, their hijab and, and, and the school authorities objected to that because they felt this is our, our school and we built it for the purpose of propagating our beliefs. That is very much in line under the constitution because religious institutions are, are allowed to build their own schools where they can propagate their own instructions. Another example is a right to freedom of movement as guaranteed under the constitution. Again, you will recall that some time ago, the Attorney General had said that the ban on open grazing by the Southern governors was a derogation from these rights of people to move freely, of every Nigerian to move freely wherever he or she wants to, to go within Nigeria. Like, like I pointed out and like, you know, we've opined in this, in this program, rights are interdependent. They are not absolute on one side. So your right to move freely is limited by somebody's right to his property. Somebody's right to enjoy his property without your trespassing or without your constituting of a threat to him or to his property. So again, even in the general scheme of things, these rights can be limited by laws passed in the interest of public order and safety. So you can see that, yes, we have a right of freedom of movement, but that does not give us the fiat. It does not, it does not give us the right to now trespass upon other people's property or to constitute of a nuisance or a threat to other people's livelihood and life, as it were. Another right that I want to look at briefly here is the right to hold property or to own property. Now, every Nigerian under the constitution has a right to own property anywhere in the part in, in Nigeria, anywhere in, in any part of this country, Nigeria. So, the, the interesting angle to this is that rather than for any group of people to say, okay, give us protection or give us patronage so that we can enter into an area and do our business, no. You have the right to negotiate for property, acquire property in any part of the, of the country, and do your business. Now, another interesting angle here is that there is this provision under the constitution, which is uh, which has been criticised that government owns every property, you know, every right in the land, whether mineral rights, you know, property. That every every land belongs to the government, you know. Now, this appears to contradict the concept that people have the right to own property because if government owns everything, then who actually owns anything? So people have clamored that the Land Use Act and other laws trying to give this impression that government owns everything should be reviewed so that people can exercise more valid ownership of property in, in in Nigeria. So but like I said and like I like which we're trying to point out here right now is that your rights are they are there quite right they are guaranteed under the constitution but in exercising these rights you must also take other people's rights into consideration. So these are a few of the of the basic rights that we will look at for now. We will come back again to talk about how we can enforce these rights, how we can ensure that these rights are realized in our various spheres of endeavor. So until then, like I said, remember to click on the notification button on our YouTube channel, ZeroGen TV, so that we can know that you're there. And you can also get notification when we are on. And also you can, if you have any questions, as to your these these basic rights, you can you can put them in the comment section. But of course, we will give um, we will give priority to those who have subscribed first, 
when we want to address the questions. So until next time, stay blessed.